So let's talk about the Decalogue, which is a 10 episode movie anthology series released in 1989. The director is Krzysztof Kieslowski, who is one of the greatest directors ever, in my opinion. This 10 episode series, called the Decalogue again, was beloved by a number of people. Roger Ebert used to teach it in classes, and Stanley Kubrick praised it, wrote a letter after he saw it to Kieslowski. And so I highly recommend the Decalogue, all 10 episodes. They are, each episode is a short movie, about 55 minutes to an hour long. It's, they're all self-contained, so you could just watch one and never watch any of the other nine. But... All ten are loosely connected in several ways. First of all, Kieslowski made these movies in communist Poland. The series is set in Poland circa 1988 or so, right when Poland is on the verge of transitioning from a communist regime to a Western regime. The fall of communism is happening at this time. And the entire 10 episode series, even though they are very uh, particular episodes about small people doing small things and, and the quiet lives that they lead, the whole series is about isms, big picture ideas, such as communism, such as capitalism, such as atheism and religion. And as we know, the communist regimes in Eastern Europe and Russia were atheist. They allowed some practice of religion, and yet the default religion of their countries was atheism. Well, the Decalogue is 10 episodes that, that are about one of the Ten Commandments. Each episode is about one of the Ten Commandments. So you got, on the one hand, a communist country and a setting of a communist country. On the other hand, you have people who are dealing with ethical and moral dilemmas that point back to, as each episode indicates, one of the Ten Commandments. And so then you have a clash in the Decalogue of atheism, non-religion, people who aren't going to church, who aren't theologically invested in any particular dogma. And then, of course, the, their moral lives, which are all about problems dealing with higher laws, capital L. What should I do? Should I murder someone? Should I commit adultery? Why shouldn't I murder? Why shouldn't I commit adultery? What are the moral theological bases on which I can say we shouldn't kill, we shouldn't steal? And so each episode wrestles with the, those big picture ideas, even though, as I said, they're about particular people in a very particular place. When you watch the Decalogue, look at the setting. Two big apartment buildings. They're concrete slabs. They're modernist buildings. And you'll see all 10 episodes come from or center on the people who live in these giant apartment buildings. In the episodes, you'll go into one of the apartment buildings and you'll have one person and they'll deal with other people in the apartment buildings or beyond. And so in this Decalogue, you're going to find characters who cross over from episode one, for example, you'll find that character show up in a later episode. In episode two or in Decalogue two, uh, that whole storyline will be mentioned again later in Decalogue eight. There's also a recurring character, and Kieslowski has been uh, notoriously silent on exactly who this character is, but this character pops up in seven or eight of the Decalogue, of the ten Decalogue episodes. He's a mysterious man who comes in at, uh, he's, he's a witness, comes in at strange times, uh, usually triggering something interesting to happen in the episode. Um, so he'll show up uh, sitting by a fire by a lake in one episode. He'll show up as a nurse in another episode. He's an eyewitness. Kieslowski has said, well, this man, this mysterious figure, he's just a guy on the street. Other interpreters on the internet and elsewhere will say, well, this is Jesus Christ. This is an angel. This is an eyewitness observer, sort of a distant God's eye point of view. Or this is just a neighbor looking at other people and observing them as Kieslowski does with his camera. Now, 
I mentioned the two apartment buildings, and as you watch any of the Decalogue episodes, you're going to notice something about these apartment buildings. In fact, go to episode two, the very beginning, and you'll see these two apartment buildings, one over here and one over here, right? And these apartment buildings actually look like, to me, the two slabs, or as it's called, the two tables of the Ten Commandments. As famously, there are two tables of the law. And if you read Exodus or Deuteronomy, either version of the Ten Commandments, you will see that they could easily, easily be split into two. One commandment's about God and honoring God. The other commandment's about honoring your and loving your neighbor. So, the apartment buildings actually resemble the slabs of commandments. And, if you think about it that way, the windows that go across each of the buildings, and there's levels on each, uh, layers on each building, uh, represent, it looks like, in a vague way, the writings on the Ten Commandments, the actual letters. And when you see characters show up in the windows, they're actually sort of becoming letters of the commandments, if you want to look at it in that abstract of a way. So each of the each of the episodes, as I said, is about one commandment. The first episode, and these are all, by the way, the Roman Catholic version of the Ten Commandments. This is not the Protestant Ten Commandments, or, um, well, because the Roman Catholic uh, ordered them differently. In fact, uh, Numbers 9 and 10, for example, are both about coveting, whereas in the Protestant version, Number 10 is about coveting. So watch these from the perspective of the Roman Catholic commandments. Uh, but the first one is about, uh, thou shalt not have any other gods before me, and the graven image commandment to not have any graven images. The first one's about an, an atheist or agnostic man who loves his son, and he's a scientist, and he has a computer, and he thinks the computer knows everything, and that he can predict the weather, the water temperature, and so on. That episode will be a clash between man or humankind's fundamental belief in itself, in its ability to reason and to predict the future, and versus faith and faith in something beyond humanity, in the mysteries beyond humanity that we can't know, but we think we can understand through religion, through dogma, and so on. I do think that these uh, each episode corresponds to one of the commandments. A lot of critics on the internet and elsewhere will say, well, you know, the first commandment, it's vague. It could be about a number of things, or the, excuse me, the first episode could be about a number of things. The sixth episode, for example, is on adultery. Well, that features lying and stealing. The second episode is about um, you shouldn't take God's name in vain, but you see lying and possible murder in it and stealing and all kinds of things like that. So it, the, the, each episode mixes up all kinds of crimes or moral conundrums in them. So you can't quite say that each episode is about one commandment. I actually disagree with that. I think each episode is about one of the Catholic Ten Commandments, the second episode being about the second commandment, the fourth episode being about the fourth commandment, and so on. So just go look up on the internet the Roman Catholic Commandments, and I think you'll find that each episode is riffing on that particular commandment. Now, it is true that if you get, take a commandment like, you should not take the Lord's name in vain, you'll probably have other sins, other crimes, other moral problems involved. So that's, in fact, what Kieslowski does is say, well, you can't just separate taking God's name in vain as its own thing that's not related to other possible sins, like lying, like murder, like uh, uh, bearing false witness, for example, which is lying, or coveting, or something like that. So he will mix all these sins together but he will focus on one particular sin. And I think if you watch it that way, if you are a Christian, Roman Catholic or Protestant or Eastern Orthodox, even if you're just loosely uh, related to some faith tradition of any kind, you'll actually gain a lot of knowledge and insight into how moral philosophy is developed and related to religious belief. That's actually, I think, one of Kieslowski's main points. You can't divorce dogma and doctrine all the way from ethics, from how we treat each other. In fact, on what basis do we actually have ethics? On what basis can we say, thou shalt not steal? Well, it has to be related, I think Kieslowski is saying, to something transcendent, something greater than us. 
Because if it's just a set of rules and conventions that we have, who's to say we can't change the conventions? And who's to say that somebody, some powerful entity or tyrant, can't just go beyond and above those conventions? Is law just a convention? Or is it based on morality that is based on belief in the transcendent? Kieslowski is all about that. And so if you watch these 10, 10 episodes, they will be about very particular problems in a person's life. None of these people are celebrities. None of them are famous. None of them are great or powerful. They're all, quote unquote, ordinary people. And yet all of them are dealing with these greater ideas that touch each of our lives. Problems of ethics, capital E, morals, capital M. So I strongly urge you to watch the Decalogue and think hard about it. In fact, I'm going to post some videos on each of the episodes to kind of go through and show you recurring themes, Kieslowski's strategies of, of filming, and what he's trying to say when he creates recurrent images. So go ahead and mosey on over in my channel through those other Decalogue videos so you can see how each episode sort of is crafted and created to riff on the commandment that it's about. Nevertheless, I have watched these episodes with a great deal of profit. In fact, watching them shot for shot, after watching them all the way through casual viewing, I then watched them shot for shot, and I found, I mean, they're amazing. They're well, so well put together. The music's remarkable. The acting's great. You come out of this thinking, well, Polish actors are wonderful, uh, wonderful actors. Where are these people? Why aren't they in Hollywood movies? So for if you're a Christian, I strongly recommend Decalogue. If you're not a Christian, if you're Jewish, let's say, I think this one's still for you, even though Kieslowski is really focusing on, on Poland's Christian traditions versus communism and atheism and, and that sort of thing. But if you're Jewish, I think this will work for you. Even if you're not of any of those faiths, Christian or Jewish, I think you're still going to get a lot out of this. As I've noticed... Other directors have been highly influenced by Kieslowski. So go watch the Decalogue. Go watch my other videos on Decalogues 1, 2, 6, 9, and 10, and other Decalogues, which I think all are great individual short films about an hour long. So anyway, that's great. Thanks for watching. Go look this up on, uh, on the Internet, by the way, and see what Roger Ebert had to say and other critics. And subscribe to my YouTube channel, please, because you'll get more recommendations like this when you subscribe. Thanks.